topic of this video is uh, dose from Radio Pharmaceuticals and how to calculate that. It's kind of an interesting question. Imagine you've done an I-131 treatment. How do you calculate the dose to various organs in the body? It's an important thing to know. So this is going to follow what's known as the MERD protocol, Medical Internal Radiation Dose. It's a very standard sort of recipe for calculating these doses. Um, a very simplified protocol, and it's uh, standard in the in the field, even though it's it's quite simple. And I'm going to go through a, a pretty detailed calculation to show you how this works. Here we go. Okay, so let's consider a source here in the liver. It's emitting particles, photons here. Maybe there's an electron, an alpha particle, and so on. And it depends on the isotope what it emits. And it hits these targets that I'm drawing in red here, multiple targets throughout the body. So we want to calculate the dose to each of these targets. So here's the formalism. You uh, first start with the activity of the source. And it's actually, I'm writing it with a tilde, and that's called cumulated activity. I'm going to explain what cumulated activity is in a minute. Now we multiply the activity times this S factor. And that S factor accounts for the transfer of energy from the source to the target of interest. And I'll go over that in a minute as well. So and that you sum over all the various sources, which of course depends on the biodistribution of the rate of pharmaceutical. So let's start with this A factor, the accumulated activity. So you can plot activity versus time, and the curve might look something like this. And that shape is governed by the uptake of the rate of the source, the clearance of the activity, and the decay, the radioactive decay of the isotope. So when we talk about cumulated activity, that's actually the integral of the activity over time. In other words, the area under this curve. So here are some actual data from different organs, and you'll see it's quite different for different organs. So let's go back to this, and let's take an example. So in this first example I'm considering, let's look at uh, Rita Pharmaceutical, where there's a, there's a fast uptake, and there's no excretion. In that case, you could plot activity versus time here, and it would just decay. It's a simple exponential decay, and here's the formula. To find cumulated activity, you take the integral, and you know what that is already. It's this, and you'll remember that math from brachytherapy. Here it is. Okay, let's look at another example. This is uh, slightly different now. So fast uptake again, but now we're going to have some excretion of the rate of pharmaceutical. The concepts are the same, it's still an integral and you still get the same math, except you use an effective half-life instead of the radioisotope half-life. This effective half-life is a combination of the biological half-life and the half-life of the radioisotope. And you can write it uh, like this. So it's the two effects, the washout, the biological, and the half-life, the decay. So now I'm going to get to this S factor. Let's look at the source. It's decaying. It's emitting particles. Here's a photon, particle one. Here's another particle, beta particle. That's particle two, electron. Maybe it emits an alpha particle, particle three. Maybe it emits another photon of a different energy, and we'll call that particle four. So we're going to label these by the subscript I. So it goes one, two, three, four, and so on those different particles. So to write out S, we start first with N, the number of particles of type I, number emitted, and you multiply that by the energy of that ith particle. And then we multiply by a K factor, which turns the energy into a dose, basically. So it's a conversion factor that's calculated 
And then finally, there's one more factor, phi. Again, each i particle has a phi factor. And that is some uh, conversion from the source to the target, a conversion factor. And what you're converting here or defining is a, what fraction of energy okay, is absorbed in, uh, in the target. So of course this phi factor depends on uh, what type of particle it is. It depends on the geometry. Uh, something that's far away, of course, is going to absorb less energy from the source in the target, and so on. So I go back up here to S and I multiply by the phi factor, and then I'm going to sum over all particles types I. And, uh, and then I divide by M, the mass of the organ, to get energy per unit mass, which of course is dose. Yeah, this may seem all uh, very complicated, but the reality is people don't go and calculate these factors themselves. It's all done for us. There are tables, and uh, these S factors have been calculated using common isotopes based on standard patients. And these are phantoms of known geometry, so I'm showing some of them here. Here is an example of one such table. This is a table for technetium-99. Of course, every radioisotope is going to have its own table because the physics is completely different. So you can uh, go and look up the source organ on the top and then the target organ along the left, and then you can find what the uh, S factor is for that combination of source and target. That gives you the calculation. So I think it may help to go over an example. In this problem, I'm going to consider 100 megabecquerels uh, injected of sulfur colloid. Uh, let's say this is technetium-99. And the problem is to calculate the dose to the lungs. Let's assume that 60% uh, of the activity goes, goes to the liver and nowhere else, and there's no clearance. Okay, so uh, first of all, we start with uh, the accumulated activity, and we use that formula we saw, 0.693 times the initial activity times the half-life. This initial activity I gave you is 100 megabecquerels, right? And uh, then, yeah, let's uh, write that. That's also 2.7 millicuries, or... Uh, 2700 microcuries. I write that just because the tables are in microcuries. Okay, and then uh, the half life, that's technetium half life, which is uh, 6.0 hours. So then accumulated activity turns out to be um, this 0 0.6, 0 0.0, and all these factors multiplied together, and the units are microcurie hours. Okay, so now we look it up. Go into find the liver is the source organ, the lungs are the target organ, and here's your factor. So we write down that factor. S is that, that factor from the table, and the units are centigrade per microcurie hour. Okay, so let me just type it out and get the answer. Um, Google is great. There we go. Okay, so that was dose is 0 0.016, and the units are centigrade. So one final concept here worth mentioning is effective dose. This is kind of really a reminder going back to the last video. So you start by figuring out first uh, you take dose, absorb dose, and convert to equivalent dose with those radiation weighting factors. And then um, to find effective dose, of course, you remember that you sum, you're summing over all tissues and you're taking the weighted tissue weighting factor times the dose equivalent to get effective dose. And those are in sieverts. All right, so there you go. 
all you need to know about radio pharmaceuticals and maybe more than you wanted to know. Uh, well, the basics anyway. I'm going to leave you with some uh, further references here for reading more if you like. And this is then the last video on radio pharmaceuticals. So next time, we'll move on to something else. <laughs>